Investor intelligence provides general information only. You should consider seeking independent advice to see how this information relates to your unique circumstances. Please refer to the terms and conditions available at investorintelligence.com.au for more. Hi there, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Investor Intelligence, brought to you by the team at The Property Mentors. It's your weekly podcast for all things investment and hosted by me, Phoebe Sikowski-Wallace. For today's episode, I have for you yet another investor's journey as alongside mentoring our valued members, we also love to celebrate and share their wins, how far they've come and to hear all about their goals. We find this is a great way for our listeners to hear stories that may be similar to their circumstances as a lot of people share the same goals. And when you hear how well others have done, it can be that little bit of extra inspiration for people wanting to do the same. So our investor today is Peter Ward, who throughout his time here with us has been mentored by the incredible Robert. Now, Robert was very keen to put Peter forward to share his journey, and I can see why. I really enjoyed this chat with Peter. He was very honest about his journey, especially what he wishes he could have done differently in hindsight, but now he hopes to use that wisdom to hand down to his children and anyone else starting out on an investing journey themselves. Uh, but I'll let him tell you the rest. So I hope you enjoy. Here's Peter. So Peter, welcome. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today, even with the three hour time difference. For sure. Thanks for having us. Now, to start off, and because I always ask uh, our investor guests to to start with this, and before we sort of get into anything investment or property portfolios, I mm. want to know a bit more about you. So maybe you like your background, uh, you know, your family, what you do or did for work. Uh, it could be what sure. you do for fun. Where are you based? Tell me about you. Um, I'm a, originally a surveyor working out in the remote parts of WA in the desert and whatever. And um, I now find myself as a project manager, you know, running projects and so forth. Um, I've got a wife, been married for well, I don't know, 27 years and wow. um, I'm 52 years of age. Um, I've got three kids who are now 18 through to 21. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sort of coming to the end of that tunnel, I hope, the light at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> ruling is over, but uh, universities have started. Um, I haven't told the kids yet that they've had their inheritance when I sent them to school. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll have to put that bill. They'll have to, they'll have to find out on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's me in a nutshell, I suppose. Um, got a, a reasonably good job, um, you know, a, a above average income, I suppose, to the, um, the national average. And um, I'm sort of coming to that stage in life where I have to be preemptive and start um, looking at our retirement, you know, in 15 plus years. Mm. Obviously, you need to start as soon as you can. I would have started a lot earlier, you know, had I had the, um, or should I say, if life didn't intervene. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, that's sort of me in a nutshell. Yeah, fantastic. Well, and, and you're based in Perth, yes? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, do you want to tell me a little bit more just about the journey of your career or careers, if you've, you've had, if you've had multiple sort of over the time? Oh yeah. Um, you know, as a as a young fellow, you do all the um, you know the uh, run of the mill positions, whatever you can get your hands on, just mm-hmm. to get that cash flow, so you can subsidise your uh, your weekends. Sure. Um, <laughs> I um, then moved in uh, whilst I was studying. That was and. Um, I then got a surveying job up north in a place called Port Hedland, working for, for BHP Iron Ore. Um, and that was um, certainly part of that remote um, work lifestyle, if you like, mm-hmm. um, in Marble Bar and places like that. And um, I then went over to England and spent three and a half years over there, had a very good position with a private developer, something that I'd never done before. But um, 
it was actually a um, misinterpretation of my um, application because the position was for a surveyor. So I thought, oh, you beauty. <laughs> and it uh, turns out it was for a quantity for a surveyor. So completely different. But they decided to keep me on anyway. And um, they seemed to enjoy my company and I enjoyed theirs. And um, the rest is history. So prior to being a member, where would you say you were beforehand? Like, how would you describe your investing knowledge? Did you did you know anything? Did you know nothing? How would you sort of describe it honestly, maybe on a scale of yep. one to ten? Um, I was always interested in investment, um, be it um, on the shares or unit trusts or or anything like that. Um, I've um, read all the text and whatever, and so I'm probably a full bottle on a theoretical level, um, but never um, had the opportunity or never made the opportunity to progress it to the next step. And that's actually, you know, you're putting your mouth, your money where your mouth is, so to speak. Mm. Um, and I guess, you know, something would come up in life, one of life's events or whatever, and that would postpone it again and again and again. And in the early stages, I think it was a case of reading all these texts and whatever and getting immersed in it and mm. wanting to make that um, that decision or that take action. However, um, um, I guess the demon started talking away with the what ifs and this, and maybe you should wait till um, the economic situation's better and whatever. So that sort of was, a, I guess, a form of procrastination, but, but also hesitancy. So, um, you know, it didn't cut my own throat, so to speak. Mm. And so um, I guess it got to this, to this point in time where, um, I sort of reflected, you know, turning 50 and I'm thinking, well, I've got, what, got 15 odd years left of work, um, time's running out, whereas when I was younger, I had forever, but now everything was finite. And so um, I thought I've got to really show a bit of maturity and um, take this action, which has always been uh, put off till later because mm. um, I've run out of time, basically. And so I said, and I reflected, as I say, and I thought, yeah, I need to find a mentor. Um, someone who can hold my hand, if you like, and just sort of get me kicked off. So, and someone to allay my fears, you know, mm. which they'd been read and I guess they'd just been manifested in my head over the years. Um, so that was always, that was also a hindrance. Um, so I just needed, just wanted to speak to someone who's actually been there and done it and knows what they're talking about. Um, and then, yeah, that's what I put in the search, you know, property mentor, and then lo and behold, this pops up, property <laughs> mentors. And I thought that was a bit uncanny, but I'll go with it. Yeah, that Google that, search um, must have been an easy one then. Absolutely. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, um, it was karma, at least that's what I was that's thinking. That's right. Um, I then thought, oh, you know, I'm an intelligent guy. I will just um, have a chat with them and see where it goes. You know, if I don't like it, I can just move away. Mm. And so... You know, I got um, put in touch with a, a representative, um, but he's a really nice guy and um, he was very warming and um, he established that trust and that rapport, if you like. Yeah. Um, and that was um, very important. Otherwise, you know, he wouldn't have got out the door. And so Rob, um, someone I've developed a trust with, and, um, and then I was showing the process you know, and what's expected and, and what they've done and what they do. And I got to sort of get an understanding of how the, the business model worked, if you like. So obviously I've got uh, reservations, you know, going in there, being the sceptic I am. Mm. And um, but I just let it progress. And so um, I provided the initial startup costs or whatever, small small amount of money just to test the water. I thought I'd um, allow myself that much flexibility um, and I got um, put in touch with a um, one of the financial advisors recommended by TPM so that was another form of procrastination in the past I knew I had to speak to a financial advisor mm. but then you go into that uh, reading about it and who's the best financial advisor to get and you know, canvassing the, um, the industry to try and locate that person and and it's just got too bloody hard. Once again, it doesn't get done. Mm. So would you say in hindsight, you know, you mentioned procrastination. Would you say um, the type of ready that you kind of needed the most help with in searching for a mentor was maybe the emotional readiness? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, 
I think and just having more confidence in taking the next step, if you like. Yeah. Um, that's really what it's all about. Um, you know, it's one thing to be full bottle theoretically wise. It's the, the next big step is to actually to take action. Mm-hmm. And you've been a member how long with us now? I think I've been with you since um, early 21, January last year. Yeah, I think. yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And... I mean, I want to get into, you know, some of those hesitancies. Yep. You know, investing can be a really big leap for a lot of people. So what were, or, you know, was there anything that you were worried about and, you know, what were those concerns that you sort of just mentioned going into this? Um, just all the um, the natural inherent fears that you have as far as, um, you know, failing, I guess. Um, of course, yeah. Making silly financial decisions. Mm-hmm becoming a statistic mm. um so yeah yeah the fear of failure and um over committing and i guess it was a lot easier when i didn't wasn't married and didn't have kids but mm. obviously you know i've been married and had kids for longer than i haven't now and um it takes into account having that responsibility to them and not having uh, stuffing up their mm-hmm. future as well as mine so um all of that sort of um eats away at you and um makes the decision harder or less should I say the decision to um, take action mm. yeah it definitely helps having someone experience and you know a mentor in this case to, to really just kind of hold your hand through this and absolutely because it's not we don't pretend that there's no risk when it comes to well, this course. stuff but you can absolutely mitigate it and you can go in very much educated so that you can almost foresee anything that's going to happen and then you've got that roadmap of you know that roadmap to get you back on track um exactly right so yeah and so what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far i don't know if i had any real challenges to this point in time to be honest um i've just um worked with rob my uh, representative yeah he's great um, and we've stepped our way through it and um I've been requested to do various requirements, you know, as far as financial arrangements. So I've just abided by it. Mm-hmm. Um, that comes back then to that trust factor, sure. I suppose. So that's why it's so important to establish that. But the other important factor too, and part of the process was um, being um, obviously um, directed to a financial advisor, as we were talking previously about, mm. and um, and then going through the process of setting up that. Um, that ten-year plan or whatever, how that was vital in the to the process to have a clear understanding of where you wanted to be, um, what you wanted to achieve. Because I guess I could see it too. Then, in hindsight, that that's where you'd also fail if you went on it when it tried to tackle it alone. Because you wouldn't, you needed that plan just to maintain your direction that's right. uh, and your objective, mm. and um, and that was the big part. And, um, and certainly TPM were very um, adamant that that had to happen before they could even proceed further, you know, with my investments and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'd, we, we're kind of always saying we would never put, you know, for the property, for example, until we know what you're wanting out of it, what your strategy is, because yeah. it's, it's kind of like um, putting forward a fitness program to someone who's, who've never met and, you know, you don't know any of their details. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and I can see it from your perspective too. Yeah, you'd have to be able to establish that same understanding and almost that element of trust as well, mm. um, just so you've got a collaborative um, um, you know, way forward. Mm. And the other thing is you're never going to be an expert across all fields that this that not. this takes. So, of course, you need that sort of guidance from the people that sort of do it day in, day out. They live and breathe this stuff and then it sort of takes the pressure off you having to do it by yourself. Absolutely. And yeah. they're in a position where they can dedicate their time to um, understanding all the um, legalities and the um, changes in legislation and whatever. So they're up to date, whereas um, exactly they right. sort of think that you know everything after reading a couple of books. It's yeah. quite um, naive and foolish. Mm-hmm. So how's your portfolio going now? Like where are you now with it? Well, I've um, got a couple of of investments uh, now, um, which is, I think Luke was saying how he congratulated me on um, taking action and getting onto it and um, getting things moving quite rapidly. Yeah. So two properties in probably um, 18 months or whatever. Fantastic. Um, was a, Yeah. And um, 
I guess it was important to, to know that I was um, doing it with my wife. Mm. So I thought it was important for her to be along for the journey. So, um, you know, we had to sit down virtual meeting with with Luke and, and Rob and whatever. And um, he answered, uh, they answered her questions because she said he didn't have the um, the depth of knowledge that I had, yeah. having no interest in it previously. But um, she now feels along with along for the ride and the understanding of what we're trying to achieve, which I think is mm. also important. Otherwise, you're going to have that huge, what do you want to call, uh, anchor, if you like, throughout mm. the process. And it's not going to be a pleasant process if you're not united on that front. That's right, yeah. And speaking of the, you know, what you want to achieve, what would you say your biggest overall goal with your investing is? Well, it was part of that, setting up that with the um, financial advisor. And um, and that also comes back to that collaborative approach. So. I mean, sitting down with my wife and um, and um, understanding, you know, what we wanted to achieve over that 15-year period or whatever until mm-hmm. our retirement, uh, what sort of retirement that we uh, were going to be satisfied with and, um, and then determining what needed to be done in order to achieve that objective. Yeah. And... Um, and by having my wife involved in the process, you know, we were unified um, and had that um, that understanding of what our objectives were. And um, I think really we hadn't done that previously. Um, we just sort of uh, floated along in life and, you know, pursued ideas as they arose, but no, never having a strategic plan, if you like. So that's what made the big, big difference. Oh, amazing. And yeah. this is my favourite question because we always get um, different answers to this, but what's sure. been your favourite thing that you've learned about investing with TPM? Maybe it was something you were kind of le- uh, surprised to learn or it was something that you, you went into it wanting to know? Um, I think um, having that um, almost a security in a mentor to be able to bounce off uh, questions and ideas and whatever and um, sharing that uh, information and um so as far as learning new things and methodologies, I guess I've always had that uh, theoretical understanding, but mm. as I say, never been to that sort of, um, got to that stage where I actually actioned my plans or my, um, my knowledge base. Um, mm. But, you know, positive gearing, something I've never really looked at previously. Yeah. Um, I was always along the negative gearing streams, and I guess that was um, the hot topic back in the... Um, 80s, 90s, if you like. Yeah. A lot of people were negative gearing as their investment strategy and um, that's what I was well read on as well. So um, I didn't think that there was much um, a market for positive cash flow thinking, how the hell do you find a, a property that fits that bill? That must be very rare. And, mm. um, and that's been a big plus of being associated with the property mentors. Mm. Positive and negative gearing is always a very interesting one. It's... Yeah. Everyone has different has opinions to, on it. It's very, very complicated. Um, but it has to be fit for your purpose, though. And that, so that's where that plan comes in and it, it fits that objective. Mm, yeah, exactly. So so in hindsight, you know, if, if you were to give someone else some advice or, you know, someone who, who wants to start investing a bit younger, would, would maybe that be your advice to, to start oh, as young as possible? Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, um, but not going in, you know, under the teeth, if you like, and uh, putting everything on the line. So just doing it earlier, starting earlier, but doing it smaller. Mm, mm. You know, I had um, colleagues of mine who sort of established 10, 20 properties in the um, space of a couple of years or whatever, so they're highly leveraged. And, of course, the inevitable happened and um, they got burnt, burnt badly, you know, mm. and um, it changed their life. And, of course, that's an impact on you because that's the story you're hearing and you're saying, geez, I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. If you know what I mean, so sure. I will certainly be um, directing my sons and my daughter through property mentors, you know, just so they can start that conversation and get yeah. that understanding. Because I can see it being a, a huge benefit, massive yeah. benefit. I think that's great advice. Well, Peter, it's been <laughs> so nice to hear your story. It's very nice to meet you as well. What an incredible journey you've been on! But like, yeah, thank yeah. you so so much for sharing that, and I, I wish you even more success in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, and you too. Oh, thank you. 
Guys, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you would like to know any more about us here at The Property Mentors, you can check out our website, thepropertymentors.com.au. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. Uh, Both the podcast and The Property Mentors handles are linked in our show notes, along with all other socials, including a link to our blog. If you are ready to take your investing seriously and want to broaden your knowledge, the best way to do so is with Luke's latest book, Property Fit, and you can get yourself a copy of that at propertyfitbook.com.au. Please make sure to share, leave a rating as it helps us reach more people on their investing journeys and also subscribe to be notified when our episodes drop. Once again, thank you so much for listening and I will be back in your ears again next week.